Welcome to the dead ball area. It's been a disappointing Six Nations for Scotland. Four losses including a home defeat to Italy has left them with quite a mountain to climb between now and the World Cup at the end of the year. But Vern Carter is a shrewd and pragmatic coach who whilst obviously disappointed in losing will focus on performance over results at this stage of the team's development. There will be lots to work on defence-wise, but I think he will be quietly pleased with the steps the Scottish team have taken with developing their attacking play. As mentioned in previous videos, Cotter has taken the Scots back to a fast ruck-based game, and we'll see a good example of this in Mark Bennett's try versus England. But in addition, I believe we've started to see a move towards a strike-based approach to breaking down defences, that unsurprisingly is similar to Ireland and Leinster under Joel Schmidt. So let's have a look at how it unfolded. First up, let's look at England's defensive setup. Hartley is defending at the rear of the line-out, Ben Youngs is covering the front, and Robshaw is defending deep, positioned somewhere between a 9 and a 10. This is so he can defend the midfield carry into the 9-10 channel and thus help protect Ford. Now, two minutes earlier, Scotland attacked off a scrum by sending Matt Scott straight into Ford's channel and he steamrolled him. I'm a huge fan of Ford and he's a brave and competent defender, but he does have a tendency to be indecisive at times and it's impossible to ignore that physically he's giving away 12 kilos to someone like Matt Scott. The tackles get missed, and Ford shouldn't be criticised for that alone, but it's pretty clear England have set up with Robshaw there to help him, and if we watch as this sequence unfolds we'll see again Scotland look to isolate Ford and attack down his channel. Ross Ford throws long over the top, and Cowan steps backwards to catch the ball and pops it inside to Seymour. If we stop there we can see Cowan by stepping over the 15 has extended the line out, removing the offside line and allowing Seymour and Scott to enter the 10 metre zone without waiting for the ball to leave the mark. It also stretches the tail of the England line-out defence and Hartley has to turn and tackle Cowan leaving a gap. Cowan has two options here. He can pop the ball back inside to Seymour or he can roll around and hit Scott on the outside. Both are looking to hit into that 9-10 channel and suck in defenders. Cowan opts for the ball back inside to Seymour and he breaks cleanly through the line. Laws and Robshaw haul down Seymour but we can see straight away Scotland are over the game line. When the team gets over the game line like this it makes subsequent phases for the defence very difficult especially for a team like England who like to get off the line and advance quickly. The issue is the pack has to come back and around the ruck so the defensive team instantly start to lose numbers to the attacking side. As we can see, Scotland recycles so quickly England haven't even set their guards by the time the ball is cleared and presented. Laidlaw now has three options. He can have a dart himself, play the wide ball to Russell or to a forward coming around the corner. He decides to have a dart and plays the inside ball back to Hamilton who hits a hard line and again breaks the advantage line before he's tackled by Atwood. If we stop there we can see the speed of players kept England transitioning and now all of England's big defensive forwards bar Haskell are on the wrong side of the ruck which is our left. Additionally we can see Ford hasn't stepped in leaving a huge gap to defend. So Laidlaw sees this, has another dart and getting outside of Haskell makes Ford bite in at which point Gray attacks Ford's outside shoulder making a line break. Burrell has to turn in desperately trying to make a cover tackle and in the end Haskell does well to get across and bring Gray down. So straight away we can see the Scots are looking to tack in and around Ford with big ball carriers, pulling the English midfield in and getting Scotland well over the game line and coming around the corner. The ball is again recycled with speed and we can see the England defence has been completely shattered. Atwood knowing this has made no attempt to get onside and instead tracking the ball in an offside position runs lazily through the nines line. It's cynical and for me this is a yellow card. This deep in their own red zone, they just need bodies in the tackle line no matter what. But Ford then compounds the problem by dropping back into the 15 position, meaning England have even fewer defenders in their front line. The ref signals Atwood's offside, but plays advantage, and Scotland keep the pace up with another dart from Laidlaw. Again, we see both Russell and Harley running hard lines on the inside shoulder of the defender, allowing the offload and quick ball. In under four phases, Scotland have gone right across the pitch and forward by about 30 metres, which is a pretty good return against a power-based defence like England's. Even better, they've created a 7-on-2 with Brown and Null left with a lot of space to cover. Laidlaw passes to Bennett and he steps inside Rob Shaw to go over for the try. It's good rugby and Scotland's ability to get on the front foot and maintain their numbers and space around the corner pays off. It's also impressive how they manage to keep England moving backwards at pace, constantly probing and attacking space. England is always chasing the ruck and the Scottish players are able to come onto the ball at pace play heads up rugby. When we talk about strike moves, we tend to think of nice intricate back moves with someone breaking the line, but in this day and age it's more about multi-phase plays that are mapped out in detail, giving the ball carrier good options that he can react to, and I think this is really evident here. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.